Hello, hello. Welcome back to Peak Northwest, an outdoors and travel podcast by The Oregonian and Oregon Live, dedicated to the adventure and exploration of our beautiful Pacific Northwest. I'm Jamie Hale. And I'm Vicki Connor. Together, we take you to some of the most beautiful and interesting destinations in our region, discussing where to go, what to do, and places to see. And today, we'll be talking about my most recent trip. I just returned from the South Central Coast. Oh, such a good trip, Vicki. We talked a little bit about this before you left, and I was very excited about it. Um, I mean, obviously, the South Central Coast is uh, a really spectacular place, and it's a place that I have frequented quite a bit. Um, as people who listen to this podcast probably know, it's just one of those places that just really never ceases to amaze me. There's just so much beauty there, so much diversity, so many cool things to see. So I am really curious to hear about what you saw, what you got into and how you kind of crammed in all of that into, um, a relatively short period of time because how long, how long were you out there? Yeah, I was there for about four days if you include the travel days, but two full days. I set out to Bandon for a work trip to make a video on something that has previously been featured on this podcast, which is Circles in the Sand in Bandon. So good. So good. So you went out there and talked to Denny Dyke, who we had on the show before, I I assume. Yes, I talked to Denny. I also talked to Beth, who helps out with the Circles in the Sand, is one of the sand artists and also helps with all the administrative stuff and uh, all the back end stuff as well. And they're just great people. Absolutely amazing. And it was so, so cool to witness that. Yeah. Wow. I'm blown away by Bandon (laughs) and the beaches there. Seriously uh, (laughs) show-stopping. This is your your first time or one of your first times being down in that part of the coast? Yes. So this is my first time really going that far south. You know, all of my little day trips to the coast are, you know, what's most easily accessible going like right over to Cannon Beach or... um, Mm -hmm going down kind of like towards Manzanita area, but nothing that was a real road trip multiple days. So I was super excited to kind of head down there, explore and see how the coast really starts to differ the further south you go. Well, I am really excited to hear all about your experience. Well, first, I just want to chat about the drive getting there. Mm -hmm. Honestly, every time that I think about driving to the coast, you know, I kind of go back to my time in California. And whenever I was going from Palm Springs out to the beach. It was never a really pretty drive or anything. But I have to say just that even though it was a four and a half hour drive to Bandon from Portland, it really was not bad at all. It was just seamless, pretty much. And as soon as you start going through the hills, the mountain area, it's, you know, it's just easy peasy to me. How did you get out there? Which which, which way did you cut across the coast range? I took I-5 south, obviously, and then I cut across going towards like Reedsport. Yeah, kind of along uh, the Umpqua River there, right? Exactly, exactly. Then through North Bend and Coos Bay and just continuing further down south. The drive was just really easy. I had Stella in tow with me. She did great. She tends to do okay with the long drive, so wasn't too, too concerned. But yeah, the drive down there, super great. You know, it just flew by. Obviously, lots of places to stay down there in Bandon, campgrounds, hotels, Airbnbs. Where did you end up staying the night? So I ended up staying at an Airbnb on the river, oh. um, and it was it was pretty cute. It was this tiny little shack that was uh, it was literally listed as River Shack <laughs> on Airbnb, <laughs> and uh, you know it was this one room. Uh, right on the river, literally riverfront. It had a great deck and everything. And uh, I think a a family across the way in their actual single family home had just redone this uh, 
this little room. So it had nice upgrades and touches to it. And then it had like a little outdoor shower and a little like composting toilet outside <laughs> and everything. So I, I got the full river shack experience. Yes. It was great. Oh, that's amazing. Jamie, where do you normally stay when you are in Bandon? You know, I, I've, I've stayed in Bandon a few different times and where I've started staying is kind of up on the cliffs kind of over by uh, Coquille Point where there are a few different hotels and motels that are right there. Um, I know that once I I stayed over there to just have close proximity to circles in the sand when I was going to cover Mm -hmm. that. So I could just walk over there and not worry about parking or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, But it's a really beautiful area too. I mean, that's the thing about, about Bandon is you have places that are right in that little downtown area. You have places that are kind of up on the cliffs by some of those uh, walking trails, looking over the beach and down to the beach. And you have places like you were saying that are on the Coquille river um, little river shack. I did not know a place like that existed, but that sounds like a really cool way to do it. Yes. I think technically it was in, uh, Prosper, uh, just a little bit North of Bandon. Uh, but the drive getting into Bandon proper was, you know, five minutes, maybe less. So it was, Outside of the hustle and bustle of Bandon, <laughs> but still so, so close. Well, that's, what's, that's what I love about doing Bandon, too, is staying close enough to town to be able to go in, check out all the little local restaurants, all the shops. So I imagine that you went into town and found some good places to eat. I did. And you were great because you gave some great suggestions. And let's just start with uh, my, the breakfast that I had at Bandon Coffee Company. That was that was great. Also, a very popular spot. There's definitely a line, <laughs> yeah. but you are able to order online and then go and pick it up. Pro tip right there. Nice. Some things I really enjoyed there. They had a great bakery selection there. And I tried this orange cookie. Oh, it was basically yeah. kind of like a sugar cookie. Yeah. With like orange icing on top. That was so good. Yeah. I always so get that good. orange cookie. Every time I'm there, yeah. <laughs> it's, I get I get like a coffee and a cookie for the road to have like yes. a little bit of sugar kick like in the afternoon after doing a bunch of work. Oh, I'm yeah. so glad you discovered that orange cookie. Oh, my God. Yes. Also, <laughs> they have other breakfast items. I got a frittata. It was a chili relleno frittata. Huh. That was also amazing. So good. So yummy. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. So you get you get your coffee. Um, did you find any like sort of lunch or dinner options there as well? Yes. Another thing to write home about the Bandon Fish Market. They have a crab sandwich, and I, being from Maryland, I am a huge crab <laughs> lover, and I'm used to the Maryland blue crab. Still getting used to the Dungeness crab here on the West Coast, but this. This crab sandwich, it really hit the spot, I must tell you. It was just, you know, honestly pretty simple, but, it you know, you got some really nice uh, soft bread, tomato, lettuce, and then just a ton of Dungeness crab meat in the middle. And it was just, it was great. It was wonderful. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad that Oregon crab has like lived up to your Maryland expectations. (laughs) <laughs> I'm really happy to hear that. <laughs> Honestly, something something's got to give. Like I have to, I have to have my crab fix here. <laughs> and while it might not be Maryland blue crab, this does the trick. What restaurants are you normally hitting up in Bandon? You know, you, you talked about Bandon Coffee Co. Um, Jim and I, when I went after I last went to Bandon, talked about the um, egg mitts at the Bandon um, Baking mm-hmm. Company. So that's something if for folks who are interested in the egg mitt, <laughs> go back and listen to that episode. <laughs> Um, you know, I've hit that along with the abandoned fish market, they've got, you know, Tony's crab shack down the way and the abandoned bait. Um, so I've kind of done that trio of, um, seafood shacks there. Um, a spot I've really wanted to hit up that I haven't been able to is Pablo's corner, which is an Argentinian restaurant, um, right there in town. It's just been closed every time I've been in town. Um, so that's a spot I, I'm dying to check out next time I'm there. 
Yeah, I was also trying to go there. And then I think just the way timing worked out, you know, they close a little bit on the early side. I, for some reason, I always eat dinner super late. So I think they closed at 830. And, you know, me coming around <laughs> 9 p.m., I'm like, hmm, what should I eat for dinner? And everything's closed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. But I did stop at a really great Mexican restaurant called uh, Rancho Viejo. Uh, That was delicious. Got some sizzling chicken fajitas, a huge thing of chips and salsa. Some things, uh, you know, that just really, really hits the spot also. So highly recommend Rancho Viejo. That's perfect. Yeah, that's a great way to great way to to spend uh, dinner after a long day on the road doing work. Um, I know that, know that, that, uh, that feeling very well. Uh, well, so of yes. course you were there, like you said, primarily to shoot a video, uh, at circles in the sand. So what can you tell us about, about your experience with that? Yeah. So, um, it was great. I got to talk with Denny and Beth right, uh, when I got there, which was on a Wednesday and they were drawing the circles in the sand on the following day on Thursday. So I got to talk with them a little bit and they were super excited because when I got there, you know, there was basically, it wasn't windy at all. And they were saying, this is so unlike Bandon. Usually there's a ton of wind, uh, but I got there on a good weekend. The weather was great and it was so interesting talking with him about the labyrinths that he makes in the sand and uh, just that, you know, he really doesn't go into it with a certain design in mind it kind of comes to him as he goes which to me is super impressive because i feel like i always have to really plan things out before i do it but it kind of comes to them as they go and it's so great to hear about um just over the years the people who have helped out and all the visitors who come and uh help out with kind of filling in the the sand after he makes the initial design um so hearing hearing all about those little aspects and uh why he kind of does it just for the goodness of of doing it you know it's all for free so uh it was it was really cool to get, get that kind of behind the scenes uh perspective from Denny and Beth. It's, it's such a cool event. Um, and you know, if, if folks who, who have not, aren't familiar with it, I really recommend going back and checking out our previous coverage or previous podcast of it, or watching Vicky's video when it comes out. I just, I love the sort of the intersection of the artistry of the sort of community aspect of it. And then also the, the spiritual aspect that he brings into it as well. Um, there's definitely a, a very particular vibe down there when people are walking those labyrinths. Um, it, it's just like this joyfulness and this peacefulness there on the beach, which, I mean, the beach is, I think, normally a place like that, but he really does such a good job of cultivating that kind of experience that seems to be really healing and happy for people. And that's just, I think, a, a rare thing to find these days. So it's such a beautiful event. I'm so glad you were able to get down there and check it out. Yeah. And it seems like a lot of people have this on their list of things that they want to do on the South Central Coast. Um, I talked to a few people there who just really loved it after walking through the labyrinth. And I ended up talking to um, these two women uh, right about age 80, one named Barbara, the other named Jerry. And they're basically best friends. They met after meeting through a grief group after both of their husbands had passed. And now they just go on these road trips together. Uh, they went, they've gone up to Canada. They're based in Hillsborough. They went up to Canada. Then they were doing this coastal trip. They had gone down to Brookings and they're making their way up the coast. And they said they had to stop at the labyrinth that experienced it together. It was just one of those moments that you just take a step back and you're like, oh my gosh, this is just so special to be able to experience it with them. Wow. That's so cool. That's, that's such an amazing experience. I, I love that, that that's in Bandon and people are able to come down there and not just check out all the cool stuff in Bandon, but to have this like really special experience uh, as well for people. But that said, you know, Circles in the Sand is just one of many things to do and see around Bandon. So are there any other activities, any other sites that you want to mention? Honestly, exploring that whole beach, Face Rock Beach, um, where they do Circles in the Sand, you know, the rugged coastline is something within it of itself. 
I love taking Stella down there and just kind of like romping on the beach. She loves playing on the sand and just running around. It is an area where you keep them on leash the whole time because um, we we turn the corner and there's uh, seal pups uh, and sea lions just like resting on the rocks, which was super cool to see. And we got to just explore some of the tide pools. Uh, when we went early in the morning, you know, it was low tides. So you could really walk out and kind of explore around some of those rock formations. And it's crazy to see some of the wildlife in the water there. It's just so special. Yeah, that whole area is a, is a bird sanctuary, a uh, wildlife refuge, um, technically. So it's a protected wildlife area for all kinds of, of animals. And, you know, just like you said, being able to walk around and see the wildlife and see the, um, the rock formations, the sea sacks, the caves. Um, I mean, it's a great place for sh finding shells and rocks. I mean, I love going there yeah. at sunset, too, because you get just all kinds of crazy silhouettes there from mm. all of the rocks um, and you get to see the mm. birds kind of doing their nightly routines. Um, yeah. I'm so glad you found that. It's such a great area. Yeah. I also really enjoyed uh, exploring the Kokyo River Lighthouse. Oh, yeah. That was pretty cool. You know, it's a relatively small lighthouse, but you walk in and Oregon State Parks uh, kind of operates it now. So they had a few rangers in there. So you can learn more info about just the timeline of the lighthouse and uh, how it was built, when it kind of shuttered down. Um, you can't go up the tower, but you can just kind of like walk around the bottom of the lighthouse and see out from the windows um and it's another little neat thing to do when you're there awesome we're going to talk a little bit more about some of your other adventures in and around bandon but first we're going to take a quick break all right folks we are back talking about uh, a short trip to the south central coast specifically vicky's recent trip to the bandon area um, Vicky, we were talking all about the cool stuff to see in and around Bandon, but as I understand it, you did not hold yourself to that city. You did a little bit of exploring uh, farther out around the area. So I'm real curious to hear about what else you discovered out there. Yeah, yeah. So I figured on my way back from Bandon back to Portland, I would take the more scenic route and drive up the 101. And I am so glad I did because... Oh, wow. The beauty of it all. Like I said, it was a great weekend. The sun was out and just driving the 101 with your windows rolled down. Got my dog in the backseat, the sunroof open. You really cannot beat it. And um, one of the days when I was in Bandon, when I was eating those aforementioned fajitas, my <laughs> the person waiting on me uh, recommended that I go see Sunset Bay State Park about 30 minutes north of Bandon, kind of closer to Coos Bay. And that I'm so glad that she recommended that because it was great. I took a long kind of winding road up north and 30 minutes later, I came to a bit of like an alcove area with a huge, like really long beachy area where people were just playing with their kids and the sand and everything. So that was really cool. Have you been to Sunset Bay State Park? Oh yeah. Sunset Bay is wonderful. Uh, as the name suggests, the sunsets there are excellent. <laughs> Yeah, I wish I had been able to see a sunset there, but um, I kind of kept driving on that road and um, further down, I made it to Simpson Reef Overlook. That, again, I just, it was breathtaking. Um, I, I, I looked out and you see just the waves kind of rolling in really gently, like those white crumbly waves um, in just really really blue water, uh, which was cool to see. And the reef area, you see some rocks in the water, and then you kind of tune into your senses, and you hear the seals and the sea lions off in the distance, and you kind of squint your eyes, and you see very far out in the distance, they're all on kind of like a little island rock area, just having a great time. And that was super magical. That's so cool. I love that, that little overlook and that whole, that whole um, area you're talking about, there's, I think it's technically, it's a trio of state parks. You have um, Sunset Bay, like you said, Shore Acres State Park, and then the very end Cape Aragos. Um, so cool for this time of year, like you were saying with all the sea lions and seals 
in their pupping season. And also in the winter time, if you go back there in the winter, it's, it's a really good storm watching spot because those big rocks you're talking about, mm. um, that all the sea lions are on when the, the big storms come through, the waves just crash against them really dramatically. And it's a, just a beautiful place. So that's one of the things I love about that area is that it's good for all seasons. But right now, like you're talking about heading out there in the spring, the summer, seeing that blue water, as you're saying it, I could just see it in my mind's eye. And I think that's just one of the most magical sights you can see in that part of the coastline. As I continued my drive, I regret to say I was not able to stop for this, but I know you have been to the Oregon Dunes many times, Jamie. Talk to me a little bit about that. I guess maybe last time you were there. There's a few spots where you can go hiking in the dunes, which is what I like to do. A lot of people do um, the uh, sort of all-terrain vehicles, your dune buggies, uh, your dirt bikes. There's a lot of areas where people can specifically do that. And if that's your your thing, that's great. Um, I'm a hiker, so I like to, to go into places where those kinds of vehicles are not allowed and you can just be free to walk through them. Um, and it's like a really kind of challenging experience of walking through the deep sand dunes, but it, it's, it's just like a, a landscape that we're not used to seeing in this part of the, the world. I mean, it looks like something in some, in some areas, it looks like something out of like, you know, the Saharan desert or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. you know, except that you get to the end of it and there's a whole ocean <laughs> right there. Right. Um, <laughs> It just, I like kind of getting lost in there and wandering through and really just taking the time um, to, to explore this really kind of strange alien landscape. The dunes, of course, they're 40 miles long, so there's a lot of places you can do um, and explore them between mm -hmm. Florence and uh, North Bend, um, Coos Bay area. So, um, you know, a, a lot of trailheads to check out, a lot of different areas in there, but um, definitely worth a visit next time you're around. Yeah. I think if I had stayed maybe like one additional day or if I wasn't trying to make it home to Portland by a certain time, I would have taken the time, gone and explored. I think there was a certain trail that I was looking at doing, but it might have been closed to dogs because of wildlife nesting during certain months. But next time maybe in a different period of the year, would love to go and explore that with Stella. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're, you're kind of working your way up north on 101, um, mm -hmm. leaving that Coos Bay area, passing by the dunes. What else did you stop at on your way north? Well, of course, I got a little hungry on my mm -hmm. drive. And uh, in, my, in my little research that I did, I found Blue Box Seafood Company in Winchester Bay. Have, did you happen to ever stop here? No, Jamie? I have not. I'm not familiar with this spot. Okay. Okay. It's really cool because they have basically turned these shipping containers into little, essentially like a food cart of great seafood. Uh, and they also had a little bar area next to it and just a great like artificial turf space where they had games and stuff. You could go, you know, stretch your legs out during the drive, um, play a little cornhole and whatnot. And I got a shrimp roll. That was so good. Came with some coleslaw. Got to take Stella out for a walk there to stretch her legs out a bit. And it was just a really solid spot uh, when you're making your way up north. Really enjoyed That's it. That's awesome. I got to check it out sometime. I'm just looking at this on, on uh, the internet here, and it looks like a really cool spot. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Winchester Bay is known for its oysters as well. That's kind of what I've, I've been there. I've been in Quad Triangle oysters. Um, had just, I think, mm. the biggest oyster shooters I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> at oh that spot. God. Um, the guy you look at and you're like, really, is this something you're supposed to shoot? I, I feel like we should fry this <laughs> and, and eat it with a fork and knife. My God. Uh, but just a <laughs> great, great seafood area. So I'm so glad you found something out there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then uh, I basically just kept making my way up north and uh, my last pit stop on the coast before heading inland was Thor's Well and the Spouting yes, Horn. Yes. I love that spot. <laughs> so cool. It is so cool. And uh, I just love how it's this tiny little pull off off the road. I mean, there's a there's a good few number of parking spots. Uh, and then you walk your way down this paved trail, super accessible. And, uh, you, you know, you kind of turn the corner. And if you're there, if you walk up at just the right time, water comes into like the the coastal rock formation there's a little hole that 
as the name would suggest, it spouts through this horn and makes this huge, like, how would you describe the noise <laughs> of the water coming? It's through? like a, you know, like a pssst. Right? I don't know if that, I don't know if that picks There's it up. There's the sound yeah. effect I was looking for. <laughs> But it's so cool. And the water just shoots on out. Um, it's just spectacular to witness. And, you know, when there's a crowd there, you hear the oohs and the ahs <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. And how would you how would you describe yeah. Thor's well? Thor's well is more of like a crashing noise of the waves coming in. So it's essentially like a little rectangle that the water flows into. And so the waves come in super strong. They crash in and just like... The, the effect of the waves hitting the rock. Usually, if it's a huge one, it has this huge splash. Uh, and they have, you know, from where the trail is, you can kind of just look down onto it and see the wave just kind of explode off of the rock, which is awesome. It, it's cool to go there at, at low tide and walk up to the lip of it and look down and see the water kind of sloshing around and kind of up and out of it. And uh, as the tide kind of comes in, it starts yeah. to fill up a little bit more and empty out and fill up and empty out. And that's kind of the effect that people like oh. to see. Um, it's, of course, also, you know, a little bit dangerous um, to get too close to that kind of stuff. As I'm sure you saw, that part of the coastline is really rocky and really rough and not a place you want to fall down. That is very true. So when I'm saying that there is a paved walkway, you'll see signs that say stay on the trail. And you might see people who are not following those directions and just trying to get a little close. I would err on the side of caution, listen to the signs. And stay on the trail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I know you mentioned that, that tiny little pullout. That's uh, where Thor's well is. Uh, I know that's one that can get really popular, um, really, really busy, especially when we get into the summer season here. Um, folks who, who don't want to or can't find parking there. If you go to the Cape Perpetua Visitor Center, which is just a little bit farther north on 101, you can find um, some paved hiking trails that lead over to Thor's Well, to um, the Spouting Horns, to all kinds of other stuff in there as well. And if you're really ambitious, you can also hike to that area from uh, Yahats, which is a town just farther north along Amanda's Trail, which oh, wow. is a really cool interpretive trail that leads from Yahats to Cape Perpetua, which is this sort of greater area with all of these things there. Oh, that sounds awesome. Do you know how long that trail is to get there? Yeah. So when I did it, I hiked basically from downtown Yahats or from just a little bit south of downtown Yahats up to the top of Cape Perpetua. And that was about 7.4 miles out and back. So if you wanted to do that hike, it's really nice. And then if you wanted to hike from there down to the visitor center and then down to Thor as well and the other attractions, that's going to add on probably another, you know, two to four miles, depending on how long that hike is. If you're looking for sort of a long distance day hike on the coast, you know, one that's more like 11, 12 miles going from Yahats to Thor as well is I think a really cool one to do. Um, and the Amanda's trail, like I said, is, is just a really fascinating hike. Um, it's got kind of a, a dark history, um, but it honors the, um, indigenous peoples from that area who were forcibly removed. Um, and I think that's just a really important piece of history to recognize, um, along this, you know, otherwise very beautiful and very lovely hike. I will definitely be back to the South central coast and bringing all of my friends with me because it is just so glorious and i would love to do that hike and maybe work off a, a shrimp <laughs> roll or all the oysters that we consume well it's so fun hearing about you discovering these parts of the coast um i, I think whether you know folks if you've been there before if you haven't i highly recommend it i'm sure vicky now highly recommends it as well um, definitely a beautiful mm -hmm. part of our state, um, to go check out. So Vicki, it's so fun hearing you talk about all of that. I am so glad that I had the opportunity to make my way down there and enjoy it with Stella. Really, really fun few days. Well, until next time, folks, you can watch all of our videos on the Oregonians YouTube channel and view all of our travel and outdoors coverage on OregonLive.com slash travel, as well as hereisoregon.com. Please leave us a rating or review if you enjoy the show. And if you want to support this podcast and our local journalism, please consider a subscription to Oregon Live. You can find details at OregonLive.com slash pod support. 
Also, if you're a fan of the show and interested in potentially sponsoring it, you can get in touch with our marketing people at advertise at oregonian.com. This episode of the show was produced by me, Vicki Connor, alongside Jamie Hale and Andrew Thien. Stay safe and happy travels, everyone. Until next time, we leave you with this 10 seconds of Zen.